the driftwood that is travis amongst the driftwood and uh, the sand and the uh, all the seaweed and so on seagulls yes we're going to find out about seagulls because they're a big part of the environment here in folkestone they don't always have the best reputation though uh, some people think they are the rats of the sky while others believe they are a vital part of seaside life Alice Taplin spoke to Rolf Williams from the RSPB in Kent to find out more about their reputation and why they should be preserved. She started by asking what the proper name for a seagull really is. Seagulls is a, is a word that's generically used, but uh, if you were to point out any particular gull and say that's a seagull, you'd technically be incorrect because it would be one of a number of species that we have in the UK. And because we're in the Folkestone and Hyde area... Is it the herring gull that we see more, most commonly around here? Yes. Uh, interesting when we see most commonly, yes. You, you will see numbers of herring gulls, uh, in amongst them the, the much larger, greater blackback and lesser blackback gulls. The smaller black-headed gull and, and out at sea you might be lucky enough to see uh, the kitty wake. Is it right that the herring gull is on the red list of birds of conservation concern? Yes, that's right. This is a scientifically based document that's put together each year looking at the status of UK breeding birds to try and determine as confidently as we can how our birds are doing. And the alarming results from this annual survey is that within my own lifetime, we've lost a fifth of breeding birds in the United Kingdom. And for gulls in particular, some seem to be showing some, some really uh, almost catastrophic declines. So the herring gull, which is such an icon of going to the seaside, has declined by over 33%. So a third of them have gone in, uh, in 13 years. Why is it important that gulls are conserved? Because they do have quite a, uh, a bad reputation, especially with people who sort of live around them and, and hear them quite often. It, it's important that gulls are conserved because they're an important part of uh, the biodiversity, the mix of species that, that defines the sort of natural history of the United Kingdom. They are part of quite complex uh, relationships with, with other creatures out there, food chains and, and food webs. And, uh, and so they are just a very important part of our natural seascapes and landscapes. If they're disappearing because of a problem when their environment within their ecosystem then to lose them is a warning sign to us that there is something going very badly wrong within the natural environment that they are a part they seem to have quite an aggressive reputation do they make it harder for other birds when there are say lots of seagulls around and only a few other seaside birds would they make it harder for them to get food it's a uh, part of uh, natural uh, competition uh, that we see across nature, really. All species are fighting for survival out there and they have different ways of doing that. Gulls, yes, can be particularly uh, aggressive and, and quarrelsome. Where gulls become a concern for humans is that they are fantastic opportunists and they're also quite smart birds and uh, intelligent and that herring gulls have, have been seen to use bread to bait fish out of ponds uh, to catch the fish and they actually don't eat the bread so they've watched what we do and found a way to use it to entice their, their prey so they're amazingly resourceful and adaptable creatures because of obviously their perceived aggressive nature if somebody is experiencing aggression from a seagull especially in in country areas where people might have guns for hunting purposes are people allowed to shoot gulls? No, it is uh, illegal uh, to capture, injure, uh, destroy the wild birds, their nests or their eggs. And that's under the Wildlife and Countryside Act. So if you have a genuine case that the gulls are 
a pest or a nuisance, for example, they can build nests that block up people's uh, flumes from their gas boilers, and that can be of good danger. Then you can call in uh, pest controllers. If the circumstances are appropriate, they have the right to take um, the necessary action, which then might um, mean uh, uh, destroying some birds or nests or eggs, uh, but they will do that legally, and they have the guidance to know when it's appropriate to do so or not. And uh, you mentioned in an earlier answer um, that we're seeing more gulls inland. Is this because they're finding it easier to uh, get their food from landfills than they are to get their food in coastal areas, or is there another reason that they're all sort of moving inland? Although these gulls are opportunists and they will take what they can in terms of, of human sort of waste food uh, their primary diet r- really still is a mix of invertebrates worms and, and mollusks snails and such like fish it's still more important and better that that they're getting the bulk of their food from from their natural environment but as as things change in the marine environment and, and these birds are losing their, their natural habitat and therefore their opportunity to feed and, and, of course, that will force them to, to look elsewhere. So the important thing is to hang on to and where we can restore these natural wetland habitats and estuarine and coastal habitats uh, and to ensure that we manage our seas sensibly as well. Um, and is there anything in particular that you can't feed the birds? Because I know um, if you go down to Hythe Canal, there are signs telling people to not feed the ducks because they can't digest the bread properly or something so is this same for seagulls yes it's it really it's it's so important that if you're going to choose to feed wildlife that you feed it food that it naturally will most benefit from and as i say there's more than enough reference uh, depending on what you're feeding whether it's badgers foxes uh, or birds as to what is right and proper for them Um, assuming that uh, human food um, is going to be right for creatures creatures that live in nature uh, of course is is a big mistake we're completely different with different metabolisms are the numbers uh, of gulls going up or down and and what's sort of the best thing for just your average person to do to help conserve the birds the populations of gulls in the uk are declining and declining um, dramatically the best way to help these animals, I would say, is to join the RSPB or to support the work of the RSPB. There's lots of different ways in which you can get involved. They don't all have to necessarily mean spending money. The majority of the good work that we're able to do for wildlife in the UK is through volunteer support. And uh, we have a tremendous team of people out there who volunteer their time in a whole number of ways, whether it's just going out and spreading the word, whether it's building nest boxes, whether it's monitoring nests for us. South Kent, we've got RSPB Dungeness, which is a fantastic woodland environment, and um, Habitat, which is managed uh, for the best interests of, of nature, and that's only, only achievable, really, thanks to our volunteers. Remarkable for, for some of the, the amazing species that we have here. Uh, some of the most exciting and most easily seen are along the coastline it, it really can enrich and the herring gull particularly enriches i think our holidays down by the sea yes they can sometimes be a bit antisocial, but i think we really need to keep this in context and, and see the bigger picture which is they're an important bird species amongst the diversity of, of wildlife in kent but um if we're not careful we will lose them Thanks to Rolf Williams of the RSPB there talking about gulls and in conversation with Alice Taplin. 105.9 Academy FM Folkestone. Folkestone. Made in Folkestone.